Okay, so let's talk about making a rubber mold. What we have here is one of the moon demos from the video, okay? And we could just cast this, right? It would work fine. But what we'd like to do is make a master mold of it, just in case anything goes wrong since we spent all that time doing the carving. So when you're designing your mold, uh, it's very simple in that you want to figure out where you're going to sprue. This part is just got one piece with a lot of detail, so we can run our sprue straight to the base, like so. And then our mold frame is just an aluminum extrusion, right, with a preformed sprue, and that's gonna match, uh, sprue base, that's gonna match the injection molder head. It's got a tapered brass cone at the same pitch. And so we're just going to attach our sprue to our sprue former base, right, base. And then we're going to attach the moon to our sprue and then encapsulate the whole thing in glass and pour our silicone over the whole assembly. So all we need to do now is get our, our wax form attached to our base. So generally you want to have good flow dynamics so I will always take the round section of my tool okay, make sure it's clean and then I'll take the sprue that I'm using, this is six gauge, I believe. I'm just rolling it so it comes to a taper. And I want that taper to be about the average thickness of my part. So I can go a little thinner. Just gonna roll it one more time. And what I like about this is as you match the taper, let's get that in focus. Try again, camera. One more time. Okay, so as you get your taper matched, the uniform flow sprueing to the edge works really nicely. And if you want something that's easy to clean up, you can sprue to that back lip without issue. So what we're gonna do is just a light touch down on that back lip so that our moon is sprued not perfectly flat, but relatively close to flat. So there'll be a slight angle, but that'll allow air bubbles to travel off the surface of the moon as well as off the back of the moon. Okay. So I'm just going to pin my piece down with my mold frame as a piece of weight. Pretty easy to do. And then heat my tool and just gently touch down the wax to the sprue. And now the trick here is to hold steady and not really do anything, include think. And then at this point, now that I have an excess of sprue wax, I can heat my tool while I'm waiting for the other portion to cool and just cut it short because I don't need all of that sprue. That's just more wax that I'll have to have travel forward on my part. And all this excess here on the tip, if you don't want that to be part of your piece, you can scrape that away with your nail. You can do it with your hot tool, but you want to wait until your hot tool cools down enough so that you can actually um, see what you're doing without melting everything into oblivion. And so I'm just gently touching the material with the blade to get a nice uniform joint. Let's get that in focus. Try again. There we go. In focus. So you can see we've got a good joint on the front and the back, and the best way to test is the shake it rule. And you're not gonna shake it super hard, just hard enough to know that your wax isn't gonna tip over with any general um, motion. And so then what you can do is take your hot tool, and I've got my sprue base lined up here, and I'm just going to heat it so that my wax fits into that mold frame and gives me a relatively good bond you want to make sure it seats and stays flat. 
So if you're not sure it's straight or flat, you want to adjust that. And then if you need to, take your hot tool and then blend out your tool. Blend out with your hot tool. You want to make sure that it's firmly bonded. So if there's any doubt, just take the time and blend it. So now we want to make sure that our wax piece from the top side fits within the footprint of our part. When we put glass on either side, we don't want anything to be touching. We want to check our clearances, let it cool down, and then we're ready to mix our surface.